Winter sports are in full swing. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CSC Sports Preview. I'm Ethan Stray, the student commentator for CSC Live. On this edition, we'll get you caught up with the busy basketball schedule and then check in on the wrestling programs. It's been a tough start to the season for both the men's and women's basketball programs. And again, we will take a look at the men's and women's wrestling programs and their success. This all ahead on the CSC Sports Preview. Women's basketball team has been on a bit of a skid through their long road trip. First up uh, was the trip, an exhibition match in Laramie against the University of Wyoming Cowgirls. Game against Cowgirls would end up being a loss, but again, a great experience for those players as some of them grew up in the Wyoming area. Now, later in the same week on November 25th, they would travel and take on the Lopers of UNK. That was in Kearney. This was a tough battle for the Eagles, and a sluggish start in the opening quarters would put the Eagles behind 27 to 37 at the halftime break. Now, on the break, the Eagles would dial up the pressure in a high scoring battle in the third quarter, drawing to within seven by the closing of quarter number three. And now the Eagles would ultimately fall in this one 74 65 in the contest. Let's get to a look at the leader in that game. It was a Shayla Powers, and she was the game leader for the Eagles, 15.6 for 8 from the field and 3 for 5 from the charity stripe. Eagles overall as a team shot 45% from the field, 25% beyond the arc, and 76.5% at the free throw line. Now, after the final exhibition matchups, as I just touched on a second ago, Eagles started RMAC play out on the road this past weekend. They would face foes in CSU Pueblo and New Mexico Highlands. Uh, neither went the way of the Eagles. Again, CSU Pueblo, let's touch on that one first. It was a slow start again in the opening quarter. A little bit of a sluggish start for the Eagles in their game so far for the women's program. That first quarter kind of being a doozy of them all. So slow start in the opening quarter uh, continued as they would only tally four total points in the opening quarter of that contest. Then following the same storyline as mentioned with the exhibitions, is a hard-fought third quarter. We've seen the Eagles come out of halftime and put up a lot of points, and in this one, the Eagles would score 21 points alone in the third quarter. Now, that would best any of their other quarters of play in that one. Shadron would ultimately fall in the ball game, though 62-52 to for their first RMAC loss of the season. Now, the offensive leader for Shadron State, uh, that was Liberty Line. She's a redshirt sophomore from Parker, Colorado. Had 14 points on the contest, two from the field and 10 from the free throw line. So Line really drawing a lot of that contact as she drives into the paint and getting those uh, fouls as she's trying to take her shot. And that's how you end up at the line. Uh, for at least 10, 10 tries uh, at the free throw line. So really good job by line to connect for 10 free throws in the ball game. Now, the shooting percentages for the Eagles overall did not look pretty. They shot 31.2% from the field and 25% beyond the arc. So a little bit of a struggle in their first RMAC matchup. Now, the final game on the road trip was, again, another conference game. This one against the versatile New Mexico Highlands Cowgirls. Now, Shadron would fall 47-60 to 60 in this one. Shadron State would have another slow start uh, in which they couldn't shake off as they would only score 18 points in the opening two quarters. Now, the two offensive leaders in the ball game for Shadron State would be, again, a Shayla Powers, 12 points all from the field and five rebounds. And then Kyra Tanabe makes that list as well with her nine points all beyond the arc and four total rebounds for Shadron State. Now, all the shooting percentages, uh, stats settled around 35% range, somewhere around there for the Eagles overall in both the beyond the arc shooting and the two-point field goal percentages. So again, a little bit low for those first conference games. So the Eagles definitely have something to work on moving forward. Now the Eagles women's basketball team looks to rebound at home on Saturday, December 9th against Western Colorado. That matchup 
is set to tip off at 1 p.m. from the Chicoin Center. And then they will remain in action here at home on Tuesday, December 12th. That tip off against Colorado Christian is set for 5.30 p.m. Welcome back to the CSC Sports Preview Show with your host, Ethan Strait, student broadcaster for CSC Live. We just recapped the road trip for the women's basketball program, and we will now move ahead to the men's basketball program as well. For the CSC men's basketball program, they've been having a bit of an up and down start to the season uh, comparative to the women's program. The Eagles have gone one and two since their last home game against Bethany College back on November 21st. Now, the men's road trip began as a short one-game road trip that went up to the University of Sioux Falls back on November 25th. This would be a close battle in the first half with the Eagles trailing 34-32 as they entered the halftime break. And then when play returned in the second half, Cougars would end up pulling away and win with an 85-72 to 72 score against Shadron, outscoring Shadron State 50-40 to 40 in the closing half of play. Now, Bryce Latimer, he was the scoring leader, game leader in that one against the Sioux Falls Cougars. And Latimer would tally 24 total points in the ballgame to continue his successes early on this season. Now, the Eagles as a team were nearly 50% from the field and finished with a 25% shooting percentage beyond the arc. Then the Eagles traveled, as I said earlier, with the women's program down to CSU Pueblo to take on the Thunderwolves for their first RMAC game of the season. Now, the Eagles came out strong and would have a halftime lead of 10 points. And then when the Thunderwolves came out of the locker room after halftime, they would come out on fire, but uh, Bryce Latimer layup with about three seconds left in the game really locked it up for CSC and put the flame of the CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves out in the ball game. So Latimer, again, the star player in that one, continuing his stellar playing as usual, had 25 points, 11 for 25 from the field was his average in three for four at the free throw line. He was also joined by another offensive star who you've heard his name called a few times as well, Josh Robinson. He had a double-double in the ball game, first double-double of the season for Robinson. Robinson would finish with 19 points in the ball game, eight for 14 from the field, and a total of 11 rebounds. Again, seven of those being offensive rebounds, so... Shadron, in particularly Robinson, has been really good at getting those offensive rebounds, getting those second chance points for the Eagles. So continue to watch him uh, continue his successes in the offensive rebound category for the Eagle offense. Now, again, Eagles pulled away with the nail biting victory in that one, 84 82 in the closing seconds. And as a team, CSC was 50% from the field, 31.2% beyond the arc for the shooting percentages in the ball game. Now, after the game against the Thunderwolves, the Eagles traveled down south and took on the Cowboys of New Mexico Highlands. This was another tight battle with a Cowboy lead at the half being 34 to 31. Now, Shadron would be outscored in the closing 41 to 30 and fall to 1 and 1 in RMAC play as they would lose 75 to 61 in Las Vegas. Now, Let's take a look at the scoring leader. And folks, I'm sure you can guess who it was for CSC once again. Yes, you guessed it. Bryce Latimer would take that spot again with a 25-point performance, 8 for 19 from the field, 7 for 9 from the charity stripe in his performance against the Cowboys. Now, the Eagles men's basketball team returns to action at home on Saturday, December 9th against Western Colorado. That's set to tip off at 3 p.m. or 30 minutes after the conclusion of the women's matchup. And then they remain in action again on Tuesday as well. December 12th, tip-off against Colorado Christian set for 7.30 at the Chicoine Center. This is Ethan Stray with you, and you're watching the CSC Sports Preview. We just wrapped up the review for the two basketball programs and a brief look ahead at their next few home games. And now let's do a check-in on the wrestling programs for the Eagles. First up, for the Eagles men's wrestling program, they took a trip to Kearney not that long ago and would end up 
having a great performance by multiple wrestlers for the Eagles. In total, CSC would have two champs and five more placers in the large tournament. And there were 58 teams in competition, so lots of uh, teams showing up in Kearney, around 740 wrestlers in total to put that one into perspective for you. And the Eagles, two first-place winners. Let's first touch on senior Quinn Campbell. He won all four matches in the elite 133-pound bracket. And then redshirt freshman Logan Berger, who would atop everyone in his 174-pound amateur division. Now, let's touch back on Campbell for a moment and remind you that he was last year's NCAA Division II silver medalist at the national championships. So now, looking ahead at the other wrestlers, Mason Watt would be the Eagles runner-up in the heavyweight class in the elite competition. And then two minor injuries would not allow some of the Eagles wrestlers to finish up their afternoons at the tournament. First, it would be Ethan Leak and Tori Early, who would be the two wrestlers injured during the tournament. Now, coming up on Friday, December 8th, that is today, the Eagles are set to duel at, duel against UNK at the Chicoin Center, and the first match is slated to start right at the 6 o'clock hour. Now, for the CSC women's wrestling team, it's been a rough season thus far, with a team record of one and three, CSC competed most recently against Shriner College. That was back on Saturday. The Eagles would fall in that one, 28 to 20 in the match. Four Eagles who would score points in the match for Shadron State are as follows Brianna Voldendorf, Annika Lee, Emma Meadows, and Camila Montenegro. So the Eagles return home and compete against Minot State and Adam State. That's set for December 10th at the Chicoin Center. Let's get you the upcoming broadcasting schedule for CSC Live this weekend. Again, a lot of action going on for CSC Athletics. Men's Wrestling versus UNK, as you heard earlier, University of Nebraska Kearney Lopers. That is tonight, December 8th at 6 p.m. And then women's basketball and men's basketball back in action at the Chicoin Center against Western Colorado at 1 p.m. for the women's game tomorrow, December 9th. And then for women's wrestling, they're also in action this weekend against Minot State and Adam State. That starts at noon on Sunday, December 10th. And then basketball, both women's and men's back in action again on Tuesday night. Against Colorado Christian tip off set for the women's contest at 5:30 with the men's game to follow. That is December 12th, this coming Tuesday. And then for you guys that are interested in graduation ceremonies for Shadron State, they will be broadcasted on CSC Live as well. Graduation ceremonies starting at 2 p.m. on December 15th. This has been the CSC Sports Preview Show with your host, Ethan Stray. Be sure to look out for the recaps for the wrestling matches and basketball updates in the next episode. That'll be popping up sometime around the Christmas holiday. Until next time, thanks for watching.